Now, I've already taken off all the rest of the bolts, or all the rest of the nuts, all around the whole uh, spindle. Uh, the way that I've found easiest, uh, I don't know what size these are really supposed to be, mainly because they were nicely rusted and stuff, uh, but I was able to slip a 9 16 onto it. Well, I wouldn't say slip, I was able to hammer it on. Uh, this makes it so you won't strip anything, but you need to be careful because you don't want to go too small or else you might damage other things. So what I did is you actually move it around so it fits sort of on there, and you see how it's not all the way down then hammer it on. Now this this one was already hammered on. It takes a lot more hammering than that normally. But you try to get it as far down as you can. And then I needed to use the breaker bar. <laughs> uh, and yes, I really needed that. I couldn't use just a normal half inch ratchet. So with that breaker bar on, you're then able to take them off by prying them off. Once again, this one's easy because I already had this one loosened. Um, once you get it so far off, then you can just use your ratchet. Um, but before you take it too far off, make sure that it's still fairly snug on there. You need to hammer it to take it off of that nut. Now, I know there's better ways to do this, I'm sure, but this way works if all you have is a hammer and a socket set. Uh, and the key to getting this guy to wiggle off fully I took a screwdriver, one of my prying screwdrivers, don't use a good one. You put it just underneath the lip of that, and you hammer it up against it, and then it makes a bigger lip underneath. You hammer up, you put that underneath again, and you hammer it down against it, and then you just keep working it back and forth, and it'll pop off. There you go. Um, and also while you're hammering, gentle taps are okay to, well, I wouldn't say okay. I've knocked against this with gentle taps and it hasn't done any damage to it, but be very careful because if you hit this, you're going to screw up where the actual seal rides and then you won't have very good seal anymore. And if you hit around here, that'll actually hit where about your bearings sit. Uh, even though your bearings don't rub against it, the inner the inner race actually rests on that so it needs to fit pretty good. Alright, now I'm going to start tackling the actual spindle itself, trying to take it off your steering knuckle. Um, now because of the shape of this, it's not just a flat plate. This guy actually has a small piece that goes inside of this all the way around. It's like a ring that sticks in it. Um, so it's got a lift that's inside of your actual steering knuckle. And because of that, you actually have an area here that could rust on and all around there that could rust on. So that's the reason why all around it it's very hard to get out. Uh, all I did was just spray all the way around in the edge because you can see where the edge is supposed to break loose from it and then I sprayed in all of the actual bolt holes. As long as you use the penetrating oil and it takes about a day or so to sit in there and actually soak it in, um, you could start by just tapping around the edges. Well, inside of that little, you can see the groove right around there. Because what happens is your steering knuckle actually has a little kind of bump that comes to this guy. So you can't just hammer straight in. Uh, so you just find the edge where this guy meets this, put your screwdriver right in there, and pound away. And uh, the main catch of this is because of the way that it's, it's built, you need to go all the way around. Underneath is going to be a pain to try to get to, but uh, you need to try to get as much as you can all the way around the whole thing and just keep going in circles. Uh, until it finally works itself loose a little bit. If you don't have four-wheel ABS, you won't have your ABS sensor here. You could also put your screwdriver in this hole that's left because of that. There we go. Now, it might be a lot harder for you to uh, try to get this guy to release. Um, it, you need to remember I was hammering at this for almost a day. 
already. Um, but once you get it moving, it's not too bad. Just remember, you just need to make sure that it's even coming out, and it'll come out pretty good. Um, it's just breaking loose from that rust at first. It's so hard to do. As you can see, yeah, these bearings needed to be switched, and so did the seal. That's actually the seal right here. That little part there, that's actually rubber. So, yeah, that's the seal that you need to replace, the bearing that you need to replace, and then, I forget what this guy's called, but it's another type of seal that's hooked onto your actual shaft. So, those are the parts you need to replace. Um, if you're lucky and these still look really nice, you can just clean them up and put more grease in them. But, uh, if you try to remove the seal to do that, you're going to need to put a new seal in because normally these will be bent and then they're garbage. It's not too much to buy for a full seal and bearing kit though. I think I'm, so I'm based in Canada and for my parts it came up to, I think, about $15 or something like that for a spindle, bearing, and seal kit. As you follow from the passenger side over. You follow the shaft over and you'll see this little rubber boot. There you go. Right there. Uh, that rubber boot is what's uh, covering up the joint that slides back and forth that allows your passenger side axle shaft to pull right out. Um, now on mine it's missing a clamp that's here. With that clamp off you could actually pull this right out of the boot and out of the joint. Uh, if you look over here though, you can actually see there's another clamp that is holding that boot onto the side that's where my differential is, right there. So, um, with this guy off, I'm just going to pull the shaft out, clean up the splines, and uh, clean up anything that's in there. All you do is you pull on the actual axle that's sticking out from your steering knuckle, and uh, just by pulling it, you can see it's slowly disconnecting it out. Ah. There you go. There. And that's it. And then you actually clean it. When you pull it out from the knuckle itself, it might be a little bit hard to wiggle around. This one wasn't bad, but sometimes you need to wiggle it some to get it around the hole. You can see the lip, and you can see all the rust everywhere. So that's what was stopping us from taking it off the truck. So we'll clean that up uh, right after I get the bearing out. Um, so here's the bearing inside. You can see it just in here. Uh, you can also see one of the seals. There's also another seal that's on the shaft, and there might be another piece to it too. Don't know for certain. All I know is that the seals that I got brand new for this look different. It is the SBK4 by Timken.
it's a little kit. It actually gives you the Baron plus seals and everything else for this uh, Dana 35 TTV front axle. You have your actual Baron, which is all wrapped up in plastic. Use the right size for certain. Then you have this large metal ring. I'm guessing that's going to be our slinger. Then you have a plastic tapered ring on one side and flat on the other. Then you have a nice little rubber seal with a little seal and lip on the inside. Uh, no spring to it, but kind of acts like it's spring. And then you also have a large rubber seal, which has a springy type of edge to it, but no spring again, and a thicker backside to it. So I'm guessing this is going to be for a shaft. This is going to be for a shaft. And I'm guessing that somehow these do the sealing for the inside. Right. I'm going to be using brass punch, that way I don't damage the inside of this or anything. To be able to get this to come out, we're going to need to hit it from in here. Angle it in and try to hit it out. I might end up needing to use a smaller punch just to be able to get that edge on the inside. But we'll see. First, I'm going to try to take off the actual seal on the inside. Make sure you protect those threads. Alright, let's try to get that seal out. I think once I get this seal out, I should be able to get that bearing out back. Years and years of this sitting in there for so long, rusting away in there. There you go. There's the inner sealing ring right there. Tons of rust coming off. punch, which that's the way it's shaped, which isn't a perfect shape for it, but I took this and uh, the main thing is, is you need to get inside of the spindle this way and then as you keep going it actually comes outwards and that's where the, the seed and edge of that barren is. Because of that, if you just push something straight in, you're just going to pass right through the center of the barren. You actually need to curve inwards to push it out. So I took this and I actually s filed down the edge to allow it so it'll actually sink in when I push it down in here. I used the handle of it because I didn't have as much metal on this piece. Or on this end. So I took it and if you push it all the way down you can actually feel where it locks in right in behind the baron. Now I don't know if this is going to work for certain but it's at least a step in the right direction. Try that out. Now. Oh, definitely cut onto the edge of the bearing there. Just sand that here. File that down a little more. just a little bit more so it digs in behind better. But yeah, so that's my fix for it.
So here we go. It's off the truck. Uh, what I'm going to be cleaning up is just these splines, and right here is where about the boot and the clamp clamps down onto it. So I'm going to clean that up nicely too. Uh, this part is always moving in and out just a little bit, um, so it's a good idea to grease that up. Now since I have the splines all nice and clean and the area where the boot clamps down clean, I'm going to keep this off the truck for a little bit and I'm going to remove the spindle seal. Uh, this is the this is where about the what's it called now the slinger and the big rubber seal go. So I'm just going to pop those off and clean that area right now. So to take off this, you need to take off the little ring that's inside first, at least this is how mine was put together, the little ring that's inside first, and then you can pull this actual rubber boot off. I just finished using a uh, screwdriver to lightly scrape away some of the rust around where the seal goes, and I also used a wire brush around it. Just remember, when you're doing all this work around here, Try not to hit this area. That's actually where your spindle bearings run. And uh, yeah, you don't want to nick that up or anything because that's really a race right there. That's where your bare baron rubs against. What I use to clean that surface is very, very fine grit sandpaper. Um, well, emery paper, emery cloth, whatever you want to call it. It's really, really try to make that smooth and don't leave any gouges or anything in it. Now I'll clean this all down with brake parts cleaner again. Make sure you don't get anything inside of your knuckle. You don't want to go and ruin any of the rubber pieces there. There's a pair of vice grips. I uh, went underneath, clamped it into here, held that with my, uh, with my stomach. <laughs> Because I don't have a vise here. A vise would probably make this simpler. But this is how I did it with vise grips. And then I used a half inch brass punch to hammer onto the opposite side. Only the opposite side. Because you only have one other side holding, right? So you hammer and hammer and hammer and it will eventually slide down. Uh, it will end up bending some parts though as you go around and start straightening out that little slinger but that's okay it's not exactly a riding surface anyways or anything so remember still be careful of uh, hitting any area here you don't want to hit it at. that's why I'm using a brass punch that way if I do hit that it's not going to hurt anything um, anyways and then you can just smack that slinger into place don't worry if you bend it some just bend it back out all it really does is stops any mud and dirt from coming this way into your actual uh, spindle bearing and it also holds your fancy little flexible rubber seal that actually slides, well, stretches on top of this so it fits somewhere around there. Well, over top though, of course. So That's how I did it. It takes a lot of work and patience. <laughs> Good luck. So I continued using vice grips, brass punch, hammer, and I was able to get it all the way down. Um, pretty good too. Uh, it'll end up bending the flange a little bit, but it doesn't really matter. Like I said, it's only the outer edge that actually has the seal that goes onto it. So uh, yeah, I also used some RTV sealer. Uh, right here, ultra black stuff. Um, I used that before this ring even started going on. I actually put a little bit just near the back edge of it all the way around uh, just to help seal out anything. Uh, finished scraping all of the rust off and stuff. Uh, now I'm going to spray with a little bit of brake cleaner. Now since I cleaned off all the surface here, before you put any C's on this, pop in the axle first. Make sure the axle is lined up when you slide the splines together.
Do you see how there's a knuckle right here? That, just this part of the knuckle that's connected to the shaft. If he is completely vertical, like he is right now, so if he's completely vertical like this, the knuckle that's all the way towards your differential needs to look the exact same. So on the shaft itself, it needs to be vertical like this again. So. Alright, make sure everything's nice and clean at this point. I already cleaned this off a little bit earlier, so... And this is also the reason why cleaning up the knuckle earlier will help you so much. You won't be knocking more dirt down into this area. So, this is the seal that we're going to be putting on. It's along with the little rubber thing. So before we put that on, we need to grease all back here, which is where the back of this is going to be touching, because it goes on top of the actual slinger. Um, and then grease all around the outside of it too, I'm greasing everything. And grease all the surface lip and stuff like that. So, so once again, using high temperature bearing grease. Pretty much you're just trying to coat everything that's back here. It doesn't need to go all the way out to the edges of the slinger, so you don't need to actually touch the knuckle if you don't want to. It doesn't really matter if you do, just as long as you don't put any dirt into this area. And we actually run grease all over it. Just make sure there's no dry areas on it anywhere. There we go. He's a little greasy. There we go. Now it goes on. Now to put this on, you're going to need to stretch it. I want to hold the shaft so it doesn't move. It needs to stretch over the inside part of the sling. There we go. Make sure it's back all the way. There we go. Now I packed this pretty full with grease because this is actually going to be where your, uh, your spindle bearing is going to be coming in. It does have a little grease seal of its own on the spindle bearing, but just in case, if anything's going to squirt through, I'd much rather it be grease than water. And now, uh, being careful of that seal and all the grease, because you don't want to get anti-seize on that stuff, I'm going to put anti-seize all around this stuff. Now, if the anti-seize mixes in with grease on the lip, it's not really a big deal. But if anti-seize gets in here, anti-seize isn't that good of a grease compared to normal barren grease. So, you don't want that to be mixing in there with your stuff. So, uh, the NECs that I'm using is just this silver stuff. Um, yeah, it works okay. Doesn't need to be anything crazy. Just good enough to make sure that stuff doesn't seize together again. So, put it all on the surface. Doesn't need to be much, just a thin, thin layer. And uh, just around the base of the bolts. Because I'm going to be putting thread locker on the middle and the top part of the thread. 
and once again watch out so you don't get any of this on your seal if you do just try to wipe it off and put more normal grease on that uh, more bearing grease I should say so this is all I'm doing just holding this up you get the idea I'm just going to show you now how I uh, pack the spindle bearing. It's a little bit different than the wheel bearing, but same idea. You want to make sure that the insides of the bearings are loaded with all kinds of grease. Um, there's a type of packaging oil or grease that's already on it, so I wipe that off first, just kind of gently. There we go. So you just get a finger full of grease. And you want to just push it into the bearing. That's the main thing because you want to squeeze this stuff inside to fill in any little air cavities that are in there and replace it all with grease. So you just keep going around and push them more in. This is another finger full. Um, it takes three or maybe even four finger, finger fulls of grease inside of these bearings. So you just keep going until you can't push in anymore and it just keeps squirting back out somewhere else in the bearing area. The better you pack this, the longer the bearing will last. Make sure you do it on both sides too, because then you can fill in the little ridge that's made by the outer race of the bearing. And you can push a little bit of grease inside that little lip. Alright, we're now ready to put the uh, spindle on. Uh, just remember to really grease it up nicely in there with the uh, seal and the plastic ring and everything. And remember that that soft rubber edge is going to be rubbing just outside of that plastic ring on the actual surface of the spindle itself, uh, just inside. So grease that up really nicely too. Uh, as you can see, I put anti C's all over this whole thing and on that edge. Because at this point, we can't really stuff the brush in to try to get the anti-seize inside without getting it all over the seal. So because of that, just make sure you get anti-seize all around the edge on this piece, on the spindle itself. So that's it. Uh, when you install it, remember that the little groove here, the channel, it needs to be pointed upwards. So we just slide this on the shaft. Make sure you don't disrupt the seal or the grease too much. You might need to move the axle down just a teeny bit by wiggling it. There we go. Now, if it's a little hard to get in, it's only, it, well, it's, chances are it's only because the axle's still trying to push up. So just wiggle it up and down some and you'll get it in. And there we go, it's on. Uh, now I'm going to clean up the some of the any C's that got onto the top of the bolts, that way I could use some blue thread locker on it. I'm going to be reusing the old hardware, and uh, they only get torqued on there about 40 to 50 foot pounds, which isn't all that much, but then they're not very big bolts. Um, but because of that, I want thread locker on there too, just in case.
I just thought that I'd show you guys how I was able to put on my uh, boot strap that I put on to the slip joint. Uh, here is the strap. I recommend getting an 11 inch at least. Uh, 11 inch is good for both sides of that boot. Um, and this guy, the way that he connects is, there we go. You go around the actual boot, push it into this little hole, and then you pull it until it's tight. So I'll show you on this. There we go. So you're pulling it tight, just by hand right now. Now, to get that last little bit of tightness before you bend it up and over, which will lock it in, uh, what I used was just a screwdriver, flat blade screwdriver, and a pair of vice grips or locking pliers. So what I did is I took the screwdriver, put it right there, right on the edge of the little locking piece, then I actually took the pliers and I pried against the screwdriver that's there. So you take it, lock them on, and then you, see if I can hold this, you actually pry against the screwdriver to get it tighter. And once it's tight enough, you pull back with the pliers, and that little bit right there would lock it, and then you bend it all the way over, such as that. And then you take your screwdriver to bend the actual strap in all the way. And then you could take pliers or whatever you want to pinch these little ends in. Because that's what'll make it so it finally rips onto this little guy and it doesn't loosen up. So that's all I did. That made it so I didn't need to use a CV boot banding tool. I just used screwdriver and a pair of locking pliers.